Sunshine State, broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show, Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Chris Gala. All right, good morning, good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. I am your host, Chris Gala. This morning, I have Carolyn Stash with Atlas Tracks. She has uh, been kind enough to be a co-host f- with me for, my gosh... A bunch of a bunch of shows now, and uh, I like to say if you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn over at Atlas Tracks. Good morning, Carolyn. Well, good morning, Rascali. Good morning to all the listeners. You know we've have um, we've moved forward a little bit. We've got a couple of places that uh, there's activity going on uh, with regard to the beaches. I think uh, Jacksonville has now uh, opened up its beaches more and more. Uh, we are slowly, <laughs> you know, it kind of reminds me of me in a way. Uh, when I have one, I, I, if I go out on a boat like on a Saturday, come Sunday morning, oh my gosh, getting out of bed, it's like somebody beat me up. And it, that's what I kind of see that uh, us reopening the state, it's like somebody beat us up and then we're just slowly getting back to our feet. But I am grateful for that because uh, what we've been through for the last couple of months is just a nightmare. My gosh, I'm glad to see it coming to an end. I think that it's time that we get back to as close as we can, uh, some degree of normalcy. And uh, I think we're working towards that. So um, I understand you went out in your boat? Yeah. <clears throat> Yesterday, Rascala, we went out uh, fishing, uh, left about six o'clock in the morning. So the sun wasn't up quite yet. Got out there and oh my goodness, there were so many people. Excuse me. So many people out there fishing already. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, kites were flying. People were trolling. Hundreds of boats out there on the unfortunately wow. the same reef that we were trying to find uh, some some dolphins. But it was a uh, it was a beautiful day out there. Seas were less than two feet. Beautiful sun. Um, you know, no fish for us. Unfortunately, I think uh, I think it was all fished out with so many people out there. I think it probably scared the snot out of them. <laughs> You know, it's yeah, been, it's been it. yeah, relatively quiet, and all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, right, a lot of dangling baits. I mean, it was uh, you know, people were driving uh, so close to us because everyone, if, when you're fishing, of course, you're trolling, you're zigging, and you're zagging, and you're trying to stay on a certain depth uh, out in the water for our listeners. And you know, everybody else is zigging and zagging in the same kind of pattern, but some of them are coming for to you, some of them are going across you. Uh, you know, you've got to watch people uh, cutting off your lines, making sure that uh, you don't cut off anybody else's line. So you normally you get out there and you just kind of put your boat on autopilot and you, you, you go where you want to go. And in this case, you really was you had to pay attention and drive. Uh, autopilot. <clears throat> in this case, autopilot sounds like auto accident. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, oh. you know, when you when you push that autopilot button and you start forgetting that you have done that and you could start working the lines because with social distancing, there were only two of us on the boat. And when you're running five lines, trying to steer, watching weed on your line, you kind of forget to look up and out in front of you every once in a while. It doesn't take long when there's a lot of them out there. So you really think there was hundreds of boats, huh? Yo, oh, absolutely. Um, wow. There were little, little 20 footers, uh, less than 20 foot, because the water was so calm mm. uh, to the big sport fish. And uh, there was a, a social distancing fishing tournament on yesterday, and Sean could tell us about that later. But I think there were 26 boats there, uh, you know, that were out. But it was just a beautiful morning, and everybody had that same idea, idea, idea. And even looking out now, I mean, it's the same kind of beautiful sun coming up now, light, light wind out my window here as I'm looking. Uh, it's going to be another fishing day just like that. Well, you know, I walk my dog every morning, and this morning is no different than any other. This morning, the only difference is it's not a regular walk. What I call a regular walk, three to three to four miles. It's just a short distance up to the end of the block and back, give him a chance to relieve himself. But when I walked out, it was so cool. It was, it was like almost like air conditioning outside. It was just right. And I went, oh my gosh, if we could stay like, we could stay like this for a little while longer, Lord, please. <laughs> let's let's uh, hold back on the heat, because I tell you, we had a couple of days there. My goodness, it felt like it was in the hundreds. It was just it, I opened the door, and it's like it's sl- like you're literally walking out into an oven. So I'm grateful for the uh, the coolness of the morning and the crisp. It was nice and 
Uh, not very many clouds around either. Uh, I looked up the um, the wonder map. I, I what I, what I used to do before all this insanity started is uh, look up the map before we get on the air and check the radar and see what's going on around uh, around the area. Uh, check with the uh, National Weather Service and find out what's going on with regard to the uh, the marine forecast. Uh, I did that this morning. Unfortunately, the beaches are closed, so I can't tell you a whole lot about the beaches. But we do have a marine forecast. Uh, if you're going to go out today, if, if you're one of the fortunate ones, like uh, Carolyn, she has access to the water, doesn't require a boat ramp. Uh, the winds will be out of the east. There will be 5 to 10 knots. The seas will be 2 to 3 feet. And that's pretty nice. It sounds like it's going to be a really nice day. Uh, it's going to continue throughout the day. It may get a little bit rougher as we get into the afternoon because of the pattern, the uh, the thunderstorm pattern, but roughly going to be uh, two to three feet throughout the day. Re- relatively nice day to be out there. If you can, if you're one of those that can get out there and go fishing, uh, it'll be a lo- relatively nice day. Um, we are still closed. The beaches are still closed in Palm Beach County. <clears throat> there are restrictions uh, for reopening the beaches, and uh, they're still trying to coordinate all that with the other two counties, Broward and, and Monroe. So we're still waiting for the uh, powers to be to give us permission to <laughs> to go back to the beach. Um, so, I, you know, I was you mentioned something about a, um, a fishing tournament with social distancing. I think you said that's um, Sean is, is doing that. Sean's going to tell us about that. Yeah, Sean's going to tell us about that. And, and it's actually going to be every single weekend um, huh. for fun just to kind of keep pe- people, you know, social distancing but still getting some fresh air. Yeah. Uh, I think this was the second one yesterday. And what's so cool about that is, uh, you know, you can go out with your min- minimum, uh, maximum people on a, on a typical boat is four to six, which is they're following the rules. And when you catch a fish, you have to video it and uh, put a tape measure on it. So it's not by weight and there's no way in, but it's by length and the video. Hmm. So uh, what's good about that is everybody's close enough to shore to keep in cellular range. Oh, uh, and yeah. they just do a calling in the fish and they're doing live, uh, live feed up, updates of the uh, leaderboard. So that way it keeps everybody, even me sitting at home, can watch the event as people are calling in fish and not have to worry about going to the weigh-in and being too close to people. So it's a great idea. Awesome. I like it. Now, you said something that caught my ear that um, you can help people with. You mentioned that, well, that keeps people close to shore. Why? Because if you're not, if you're too far out, your cell service is is out. You you can't, you won't have cell service. But... But, <laughs> but wait, that's, there's more. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Carolyn has a product that I think is awesome. Um, I call it a hotspot. I, 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 is that the right word? A, a... Yeah, that's the right word. It's a satellite hotspot. It basically turns your existing cellular phones or laptops. Uh, it creates your own satellite cellular network on your, wherever you are. Uh, if you're out on the water and you're out of cellular range, if you happen to be in the middle of the state and you're hunting, and you uh, no cellular range or anywhere in the country in the world. So this, you turn this little device on, you connect up to eight phones or laptops to it at one time, and now you use your existing phone to, to make regular phone calls uh, to, to anybody you want to or text back and forth and even browse. Um, what else is cool about this little device? It has an SOS button on it, which we all, you know, we don't want to have to use, but uh, in the event of uh, an SOS, it, it uh, you hit the button, and it'll go, go to uh, two people that you have programmed on the account. Wow. Uh, tell them your latitude, your longitude, that you have an issue, and, and they can send the Coast Guard out. Awesome. But it's a, great, it's a great device to have in a situation like this. Yeah, you're, when you were talking about uh, the... The tournament and having to stay close to the shore, that came to mind immediately. Uh, having something like that is, you know, what I like about your products. They provide something that that is just, I, I really honestly, I'm, I'm not trying to boost it or anything, but it's peace of mind. What What is peace of mind worth? When you have one of the trackers that Carolyn has, and they're, they are as small as a credit card. They're not as thin as a credit card, but they're that size, a little thicker than that. You can slip this thing into your pocket. You're going out on a fishing trip with some friends, and your better half is staying. You're just like what's happening with Carolyn a lot of times. Her better half goes out fishing. She's at home. You can't help but worry. You know, you're out there subjected to the weather. That and anybody who's lived in South Florida knows it's subject to change in an eye blink. So you have this thing with you, and whoever's on the other end, whoever's on shore, can know where you're at, where you've been. They can follow you on a, on a map within 10 feet anywhere on the planet. So God forbid something goes wrong, you have this little peace of mind that you're carrying with you 
that helps, you know, if, it, if God forbid, if the ship goes down or something, you go overboard, people can find you if, for trying to look like, imagine this, you're looking for a pin in a haystack and you have a really powerful magnet. It'll just pull that pin right out of that haystack. That's what this is kind of sort of like. You have a piece of equipment on you that is broadcasting where you are at any given time. Within 10 feet, they can find you. So that's the things that I like about what Carolyn has. She has um, the, the full-blown alarm, but the little, the little pocket thing is, is like the neatest thing to me. I just get such a kick out of that. But we can go from tracing your boat, your four-wheeler, your plane, to the one I love, <laughs> icebergs. <laughs> we trace icebergs, right? Right, absolutely. If you want to get a cold cocktail, I can tell you where to go get uh, 150 <laughs> of them. <laughs> so we do the icebergs as well. We're getting into the pet the pet and animal market now. Uh, what, you know, we, I don't know how many times my dog gets yeah. out the front door and he doesn't wear a collar inside the house, and and you know, all she's going to take is someone to think he's cute mm. and take him home with him. So wow. um, we're going to be testing one on Ralphie this week, and hopefully get some uh, affordable pet collars that are probably going to cost about fifteen dollars a month for the service to <clears throat> to know where your your animal is, which uh, you know is real important, especially in the hunting. A lot of us are yeah. taking. Uh, hunting dogs and ATVs and doing some, you know, uh, quail hunts. So that's important. And I'll tell you, last night what happened. I had a woman, uh, her husband went fishing at nighttime off the coast of North Carolina. And, um, you know, of course, he was overdue and she got nervous and couldn't remember how to log on to see where the boat was. And she she called us at, or me at 1030 at night and told her exactly where her husband was. He was on the way back. And, and uh, you know, she was she was thankful because, sure, at nighttime, things you think about things that uh, that are going through your mind. And even last week, Rascal, I remember the guys were out fishing and that storm came up through Boca with 50 mm-hmm. mile an hour winds. And all they had to do was log on, see where the radar was, see where the guys were. Give them a call and say, you might want to come back in. And they're like, if we already saw this, we're coming in now. Yeah. Because yeah. you never know. These storms in Florida or anywhere rip up so quickly, and seas can go from flat to 10 feet in no time. It's scary. I, and one of the scariest things that I have witnessed is being, and, and I was in the Bay when this happened. We were, uh, I was pretty young at the time, so probably 16, 17 years old, in my friend's boat. Um, There's four or five of us in the boat. And we were being responsible. We weren't really doing anything dangerous or anything like that. We were, you know, swimming in the bay and just having a good time skiing here and there. We got carried away, not watching what was going on, and a storm came up on us. And before we knew it, it was coming down, cats and dogs. I mean, it was just raining really hard. The spookiest thing was, in the span of about five or ten minutes, because we didn't have a, a, a compass, we couldn't tell where we were. We couldn't see the shore. We, couldn't, we, we, we didn't know which way was what. And so we're, we did the best thing we we could do at the time. We just anchored and waited for it to blow over. But for that 15 or 20 minutes while that storm was just blowing that rain down, I didn't know which way was what. And that is scary. And you can't see but maybe, what, 15, 20 feet, you know, away from the boat. Uh, other, other than that, you can't see. So it's uh, having something like this is a godsend. It is a god. That's why I say, what can you put on peace of mind what kind of price can you put on a peace of mind whether that's to protect your piece of equipment or you know a loved one it's something that is easily available i like the idea about the dogs because my dog is uh, i've rescued my dog i've had him now for a couple of years when i first got him the second day <laughs> the second day he literally busted through a screen in my back on my back porch i had him on the took him out in the yard in the backyard on a leash he did his business I brought him back in. I was opening the sliding glass door. I slid the uh, the, the uh, leash off of the collar. As soon as that leash got off the collar, he did a double take behind me. And before I knew it, he literally burst through the screen in my back porch. And off he went. And oh my gosh, I spent an hour. I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky I didn't have a heart attack trying to find out where he was. I was so concerned that he was going to get hit. Somebody's going to steal him. And just so many things go through your mind. You're, you're, you get this sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. Oh. So having something like that would, oh my gosh, that would be the best uh, that I could think of with regards to uh, watching out for your dogs, especially like those that you mentioned that they're going to go hunting. Oh my goodness, they're out there in an open field. Uh, God forbid that they take a turn somewhere and you don't know where they're at. Like, yeah, and do- I'll tell you what. Uh, what's interesting too is the gentleman that builds these trackers, and we'll post up the pet tracker on the Fishing in Florida page. Great. Um, he had recently moved, and he had cats, 
So what he did was the cats were he wasn't convinced they knew how to get to the back to the new home because they were outdoor cats. So he attached some of these to some small little kitty harnesses, had the cats wear them for a while, uh, and you could make a geofence around the house. So if the cats or the oh, cool. animals leave a certain boundary, it's almost like an invisible dog fence. Wow. It'll start sending you the emails every five seconds of where the dog's walking down the street. So wow. what's great about this is it's cellular. You get a lot of frequency of messages. It's very low cost. And once he knew the cats knew how to get home now, now they don't have to wear the, the tracker. But it's a great it's a great thing to have. And, you know, even... Um, you want to know how far did you walk your dog today? Well, now you can go back and look at the maps and say we walked them four hours or two hours or one a mile or anything like that. But uh, it's, it's something it's something I'm very excited about. Um, I can't wait to get That's mine awesome. and, and try it. But uh, it's a USA-built product, which I love, out of Gainesville. And, uh, you know, it's really it's, it's going to be fun to, to get on some of these, these uh, more unique things like motorcycles now we could do with it. their trackers very, very small. Uh, and most the motorcycles are in cellular range, so it's not an issue with satellite trackers, mm -hmm. vehicles, um, other kinds of construction, uh, jet skis, you know, things like that um, will be really, it's be really exciting. We'll tell our, our listeners as, as we try some of these things. What, now, what is the advantage of what you just mentioned? Because we have the portable tracker. So this is yes. physically smaller than the portable tracker? This is going to be about the same size, but it's cellular service versus oh, satellite. See. Okay. Right. So for things that are you're worried about being out of cellular range, like boats and jet skis that might travel further, or oh, things okay. equipment that's yeah. been stolen, you want to be on a satellite network. Well, if something is guaranteed that it's never going to need satellite service, like your pet, or maybe a jet ski that stays close, or something like motorcycles that are you know typically just driving around through the mountains, this is the perfect kind of tracker that uses uh, AT&T towers and cost is less for cellular service. Uh, and you can get messages even more frequently because the cost is so less. So wow. if Fido's walking down the street and just kind of went out an open door by accident, you can find them pretty quickly because the message interval will be so much shorter, Riscala, that you can go, oh, he's on the corner of 14th and 15th Street. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, yeah, and, and when do you this think this is a really, really cool technology? When do you think that this is going to be happening? You, you said something. Uh, I, think I think I have. I think I have one coming in the mail on Monday. Hot dog! And yeah. I, I think I know the answer to this, but I want to ask just to be clear: if I have my cell phone with me and my dog gets out, and I can follow him on my cell phone. Right, it's going to do a few oh. things. It's going to notify you by cell phone that uh, with the location, little emails. Then you can log on to the app, and you can actually see exactly where Fido's running down the street. And uh, you know, and what's so cool is you can do multiple geofences. So what he, what this gentleman has come up with is, um, while the dog's in the house, it has a fence, a visible fence. The, the tracker won't go off. Uh, then he puts the dog in the car to take him to the office. So he has a little device in the car that just says, okay, he's not out of his area. The car's okay. And then he has another device, a small little um, receiver in the office. So if the dog's in the office, it's still his little, uh, he's in his boundaries. Mm -hmm. Once he leaves those three areas, then it'll start sending the, <laughs> the uh, owner messages. So you can tell it wow. when you want it to, to send messages or not. And well, we're really excited about it. You know, waterproof, we can go to the beach. Uh, you know, now you've just created a bigger play area for your animal. If you let him out in the yard, you don't have to worry so much about him or her or your, you know, your cat, your weasel, whatever people are having these days. Um, <laughs> weasel. So it's, it's, it'll be pretty exciting. I know a couple of weasels. <laughs> They're not pets, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> we won't mention any names. <laughs> I just I had a weasel. I got a kick out I of had that. a weasel, and they are smart as can be. I, ha I had a friend who had, um, what, was it? What, what are those little things? They look like mice, but they're long. Oh, my gosh. Um, Gerbils? No. The, these, are, these are big. They're like the size of a small cat. Um, Chinchilla? No. Oh, my gosh. But they're, they're extremely curious things. And they get, they, they would, I would go to his house and they would be quite trying to get up my pants leg. And they were just crazy. I, my gosh, I can't think of what they are. I'm thinking, hopefully it'll come to me. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we're having fun. And what happens when we're having fun is time to take a break. So we're going to take a break. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with Risk Call and Carolyn this morning. Uh, Robert, by the way, who is one of my regulars, he's, um, <laughs> he's out fishing. Carolyn didn't want to hear that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's uh, he's out doing some snook fishing this morning, so we'll get a report from him uh, next week as to how he did. <laughs> you got, what were you going to say? I was going to say he better not send me pictures later. <laughs> Yeah, he's, I got nothing yesterday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, my friends, we'll be right back. Please don't go away. If I can find it. There we go. Listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Stella Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Call us Steven. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Owner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclub.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and... Best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre, simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do, and it would support the shows that we bring to you, and hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. Being a dad is an adventure full of special moments. A group! Surprise! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. (laughs) But every moment you spend with your kids, even the smallest moments, can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing in Florida. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. 
All right, we are back. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, we will have an archive set up. And the way to find that archive is to go to the Facebook page. On Facebook, you will find Fishing in Florida. Please give us a like. That makes us more relevant in the searches. And while you're there, you can find the links to all of the archives. I have a a YouTube channel that all the archives are on, but for the life of me, I can't figure out how uh, you can go on YouTube and just search for Fishing in Florida. Because if you do, you're going to come up with a bazillion different uh, results. So the easiest way I have right now is if you go to our uh, Facebook page and uh, give us a like while you're there, please, and uh, you'll find the links there as well. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. You know what I like about Carolyn's stuff? It is peace of mind. You know, I I do this rhyme about if you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend over at Carolyn, Carolyn over at uh, Atlas Tracks. And uh, the reason I say that is... Peace of mind. You really, you know, I, to me, I can't put a price on peace of mind. And, and the products that she has um, are so wide and, and, you know, we were just talking about pets. It's going to be awesome with the pets. My gosh. I said, I, I said earlier, mine got away from me. My heart dropped. You know, I, I know that a lot of people that have pets, it's like one of their kids. Uh, they refer to him as, oh, it's my furry child. Um, God forbid something, you know, they get out and, and they go everywhere. <laughs> they don't, uh, oh, well, this, it's, this guy's my neighbor's yard. I better not go in that yard. They go wherever they want to go. And if you have something like what she's talking about, what a, you know, again, peace of mind. It really boils down to peace of mind. So welcome back, Carolyn. Thank you. You know, absolutely. And, you know, pets are our family members. And, and um, you know, it, unfortunately, some pets get out and they don't come home for Just so many sad. reasons. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, and even getting hit by a car. I yeah. mean, now, now you can keep that from happening. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to share everything with everybody. That's awesome. And, and the pets really are is. a part of our family. So. Great. Well, my next guest, Ben Miller. Ben uh, was uh, someone that Carolyn asked me to bring on. And uh, he sounds like an extremely extremely interesting man so let me uh, introduce ben miller and welcome my friend to the fishing in florida show hi good morning everybody do you hear me okay you are coming through loud and clear my friend (laughs) excellent glad to be here it's a beautiful morning it certainly is and tell us a little bit about what uh what you do well uh i am an acupuncture physician and an herbalist and i specialize in traditional chinese medicine Wow. Uh, I'm a master of classical five element, which is a type of Chinese medicine that is really focused on stress and anxiety and depression, the whole range of emotional Holy smokes. and mental you, patterns. You must be a busy so, man today. <laughs> right. When I hear you guys talking about peace of mind, that is definitely the conversation that we're having. Wow. And there's, there's just not, not much to turn to. So yeah. even a little peace of mind helps. And what Carolyn brings, this little extra peace of mind, is something that every one of us can benefit from. What, what Carolyn has, um, and not to discredit it, because I love it 1,000%, but what you're talking about is a little different. This is something that we already have that we have to release within us. Am I right? Sure, sure. Well, it, it's so much about how you're going to look at what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. and how you choose to orient yourself around the events in your life at that moment. And with so much change and so much uncertainty, it's really uh, an extra lift for us to stay positive, stay optimistic, stay focused on on what's good. It takes, um, I I was telling Carolyn earlier this week, I just haven't been subjected to this now for going on, I don't even know how many days it is. It takes a toll on you emotionally. It takes a toll on you spiritually. It, it takes a toll on you physically. All of that adds up. Mm-hmm. And where do you mm-hmm. turn? You know, and then I find out about somebody well, like what you. What you, you do know? is you have to collect some practices. You know, you walk, right? You sit. Yep. Yep. Um, you you breathe. It's simple stuff. You return to nature. Hmm. You you try to to reduce some of the hyper stimulation that we subject ourselves to. Yeah. The modern era that we're in is so overstimulating. And our nervous system is exhausted because of it. So anytime you can create a little bit of a gap, a little bit of quiet or stillness, it really refreshes the whole whole mind, body, and spirit. I just got tingles. You know, what you're saying just hit home with me because that's what what happens when I go fishing. I didn't... Oh, for sure. Especially when you're heading out and you're looking out over to the horizon and you've got this bigger, greater vantage point. And it, that, that's just the perspective we have to take in our I daily guess, lives. We don't have to be 
on the ocean to mm-hmm. have that kind of mind space. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I hope that we can kind of bring it with us and call upon it when right. we need it, when it's getting crowded. But you just kind of, in a, in a scientific sort of way, explained to me, I guess I knew it all along, but having it, have, have, having heard it from outside, from, from somebody coming from the outside instead of within myself, it all made sense. Um, wow, I got a tingle out of that. That was pretty cool. Um, so it's something that we have that we have to work at. Uh, and in these days, that my gosh, we've gone through such a change, and it's such a drastic change. The ability to to be mobile has been restricted. The ability to socialize has been restricted. The ability to congregate has been restricted. And these are all vital things in our life. We're social creatures. And all of this has been shut I, down. I, I agree with that in, in some ways. But I might substitute the word restricted for changed, right? We've true. got all these changes. Yeah. We're going to socialize, but not the way we were last year. That's month true. Good point. Before. Yeah. We're, we're going to travel, but we're going to have to do it in other ways, maybe non-physical ways. Yeah. Right? And so we have to reassess all these options, right? So many of our status quos have been disrupted. Mm. And, and, and the change, it seems extremely rapid right now. But to be honest, we're in a perpetual state of change. We're always in uncertainty. We're basically dancing in a situation that's chaotic and unpredictable. And we thought, you know, we were getting comfortable with stable norms. But that's us just kind of lullabying ourselves into sleep. And it, I, I think that this time of rapid change opens up so many great new opportunities. And if we can stay focused and stay positive, then we can That's take the trick. of us personally and as a globe. That's the trick right there. That, what you mm-hmm. just said is the trick to the whole deal. Because uh, <clears throat> for me, I mean, I, I was positive. I was, you know, we're going to get through this. And, but I'll tell you, as it dragged on, it, <laughs> it's like a little bite. You know, as somebody told me many years ago, how do you eat an elephant? I go, how do you, what are you talking about? You don't eat elephants. Because, yeah, how, if you had to eat an elephant, how would you eat an elephant? I said, I don't know. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. So right, it's kind of like right. that, one little and piece at a time. And you go through your day one step at a time, yeah. right? And so it, 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 time is, is not as linear as we think it is or feel it is. And the present state is all we actually have. And so when you're in the moment and you're in the present state in a way that's not distracted by melodrama or not crowded by an agitated mental state, then that's where you're at. And if you start projecting into the future or lamenting about the past, and basically, you're just caught in your headspace, and you're distracted, and you're missing the present moment. So as we're going through this change, I like that. I like the way that you look at it versus the way that I look. Because I get, after a while, I get pretty pessimistic, and I need somebody optimistic. And uh, I can well, tell you're you. you're not that. wrong, but there are other options. Yeah, well, I, and it's also, I think, in my opinion, anyway, it's important how you view it. You know, I viewed it as a oh, restriction, and you viewed it as a change. Uh, there's two different ways of looking at the same thing, and out of the two, change is more positive than restriction is. So I've learned over the years that what comes out of your mouth can affect life. Uh, so it, oh, yeah. the choice yeah. of words is important, and especially during a time like this yeah. where we are, yeah. we're in by our, we have so much time now that we usually would not because we, many of us would be at work or something. You know, we'd be doing other than just sitting at home. Um, mm, now we have more introspective time. Yeah. And it, for a lot of us, for me, I get off onto the thinking scale, and I'm still going to think about this, and I think about that. And before I realize it, the things that I'm thinking about aren't that nice, you know. I, I have to kind yeah, of stop the whole, myself. Yeah, the whole range of thinking is always available, right, from the light side to the dark side right. and somewhere in the middle. And the experience that we're having doesn't have any inherent meaning to it. The experience we're having is just what's happening. It's just chaos, just uncertainty, just the universe. Mm -hmm. And then we form a relationship to it, right? Because you've got your nature and you start to relate to the moment. You're like, I love it or I hate it or doesn't matter. And and then you've got this range of options that have just presented themselves. Mm -hmm. So none of them are better or more right or wrong. But you can take your heart and your emotional kind of center and you can expose it to each of these different uh, possibilities. Hey, how about this? And you go like, oh, that's no good. And you go like, oh, how about this? And your heart goes, oh, that's a little better. So you check those two exposures and you know instantly which one you prefer to expose yourself to. And that's enough to then invest in that perspective, right? You go ahead and put your language towards that option, mm. put your attention towards that option, and you choose that one. 
And when you choose the better option for yourself, you've just acted like a free person, right? You've just exercised some True. personal authority instead of just bouncing off the circumstances. You made a choice, and that's what personal power looks like. That's what authentic behavior looks like. And then each time you make a choice, your options now change again. And it's kind of a rinse and repeat. And uh, you just do it bit by bit. You know, don't get ahead of yourself. That's awesome. This is, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I was going to ask Carolyn something. <laughs> I lost my train of thought completely. I'm jumping from one thing to another. Well, I have to tell you, I've known Ben for about 10 or 11 years, and he he treats me personally. And I'll run into his office for some acupuncture, all wound up, no idea what the heck I'm doing today, just booting my mouth off. He can't even get me to be quiet. And after I listen to him and he tells and shares some of the wisdom of Ben, um, I leave the office. I'm focused. Uh, I can say, wow, it's not the world is not that bad. Look at that that bird that's singing right there on the curb. I didn't notice before. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I wanted him on here because this is a time of stress for everybody, yeah. all of our listeners. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we don't really know what to do with ourselves. So Ben, thank you for coming on and sharing yeah. some of that with us. Absolutely, oh, it's my my pleasure. And and Carolyn's so right. You know, we we get moving so fast that it's not even that easy to just sit still or to land and to let the, the ground hold us. And when she comes in, she's like a butterfly and she's <laughs> fluttering around. And she's got all this zooming energy and it's so delightful, but it, it's taking her kind of over her own tip. And so when we allow that to vent off, the acupuncture can do wonders to allow the excess and nervous energy to vent off. And we do some body work to get her body to relax. And then you got to just let her have some space to vent. And, and when she's done with that, it's, it's a much easier you know, rest of the day, I think. How, how long does a, an acupuncture session last? I, I usually allow a 45 to an hour a window. Mm -hmm. you know, people have different needs for sure. Um, but that's usually pretty generous and ample time. Is this something that you go to see people or people come to see you? Um, well, I've been practicing uh, since 2004, so I've been in a lot of different settings. Um, right now, I have a small private practice. People come to see me. Okay. Um, and, and if you want to get in touch with me, get in touch with Carolyn, and she will concierge you to me. Um, you... But I'm here in Deerfield, Pompano area, and uh, I, I've practiced uh, for 15 years before taking a two-year sabbatical where I went to Thailand and lived in Southeast Asia and took a break. Uh, wow. Just returned to South Florida in August of last year. Of, of last year? Mm -hmm. So um, now you got my curiosity going. When you were in Thailand, how, how uh, much of a change is there in the society and the way people respond with each other in Thailand versus here? Oh, it's, it's a huge difference. I mean, it's a giant, giant difference. Now, in the city, cities sometimes feel like cities everywhere you go, mm -hmm. right? But you really notice the difference when you're out of the cities and you're, you're in the more country areas or near the ocean, near the islands. Um, no, the Thai people are uh, not moving as fast as we are here. Um, the weekends, they go out into nature. They go fishing. They go diving. They go camping. They don't stay at home. They're not... Um, real sedentary people. They love to go out. The parks are just swollen with people. Everybody's jogging and, wow. and doing lots of activity. There's a lot less obesity, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, not to say that they don't have their problems, but it, it's it's not a culture as addicted to the rat race as we mm -hmm. are here. Um, and wow. the food is so much less expensive. The cost of living is so much less expensive so that if you're okay with the simple life, then you can kind of slow down and enjoy your simple life. <laughs> um, here, it, even a simple life, is you got to be moving quick. Yeah, to that's make what I was happen. about to say. I just, that's not something that can, we can do. I mean, we can enjoy around. I mean, then you remind me of when I first joined the – I was in the military many years ago. I joined the Air Force when I was 17. They wouldn't let me wow, go. thank uh, you for your service. Thank you. Um, they wouldn't let me go active duty until I turned 18. But the short of the story is I, I was a Miami boy. I grew up in Miami. So at any given time uh, in, in my when I was 17, I could go anywhere in Miami. It, it didn't matter what time of the day. It was Something was going on. Uh, I went through basic training in uh, San Antonio, and then I went through um, 
technical training through uh, uh, Denver, Colorado, and then I went through a couple of bases, and then I and they told me I was getting orders to go to Panama City, Florida. And I, oh my gosh, this is a dream come true. This is party land. This place parties all the time because I remember going there when I was fourteen or fifteen years old. My dad took me there, so I got there to just around uh, August. Yeah, I think it was around August, and it was party city. They had this thing called the Strip, which is where all the party goes on. What I didn't know is come uh, September, sometime mid-September, the beach shuts down. When the beach su- shuts down, the entire city closes at 9. This is back then. I don't know if it's true now. But back then, it was only two things open, a Waffle House on Highway 98 and a gas station. And I, when I tell you the town shuts down, it shuts down. It took me about six months to get acc- to get acclimated to that. But once I got acclimated to that simpler life, it, because it wasn't all that running around, it wasn't a rush yeah. to get from here to there. My gosh, what a calming yeah. feeling that was. It takes a little little time for your own momentum to kind of disperse to slow down and, and yeah. adopt those new rhythms, for sure, for sure. Wow. Well, now, do you have uh, a website? Uh, no, I don't maintain a website, but uh, I'm on social media. You can find me on Facebook or on Instagram. It's Five, uh, five Element Ben. Um, and, and I'm a local guy. I'm old school. I like to talk on the phone with, uh, with voice connection or send me a text. Uh, we'll, we'll coordinate. Uh, cool. But right now, it's really about spreading the, the ideas to do some teaching. You know, I, I love this forum. I I think that here in this conversation that you and I are having uh, might be a surprise treat for some of your listeners. It's a little bit maybe outside your normal conversation, uh, but I think it's so pertinent for all. Of us. I I totally 100% agree. And and uh, we as we continue down this this road. Uh, hopefully we're going to be opening up and I don't, you know, again, I don't think we'll ever go back to normal after having this experience, but we'll get close. I believe we'll get pretty close. And, uh, Uh, here's my opinion on that. Listen, we, we still have malaria. We still have AIDS, right? We still have hepatitis. We still have the flu. This is now part of our, nor our new reality, right? There's this new disease that's out there and we have to be, we have to learn how to deal with it. Right. Of course, it's the hardest, the first time we're all kind of working it out and getting our immunity up and finding the right vaccines, finding the right treatment. Mm -hmm. But this is it, man. This is part of it. So now we don't have to be in this hyperbolic state of fear and reaction. I agree. It's not all wrong, but it's a little bit, you know, swollen and inflamed. So that's normal. Now the, the inflammation is going to come down. The world will cool off a little bit. Our fever will pass. And then we're going to be in a smoldering phase where the fever is not as hot, but it's still present. Mm-hmm. And we can't just ignore it, right? we got to be appropriate. Um, we got to just change our, our ways a little bit. Uh, hopefully it's the good ways where we give each other a little more space. You know, we're, we're a little bit more conscious of the invisible uh, connection and um, state of dependency we have on each other. You know, mm-hmm. uh, my neighbors and I, we rely on each other, whether we talk to each other or not. And I think that's just good to keep in mind. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I know just about, well, at least six houses around me. We're all, we have a conversation typically three or four times a week. Uh, we'll see well, each other in the yard. I, you know. I'm glad to hear that. Um, it, this, that's why I moved to this particular area where I am, because I, I grew up in Miami inside of a small city called Carl Gables. And this, mm-hmm. where I live now is a place called Wellington, which is very, mm-hmm. reminds me very much of Carl Gables, the way, when I was growing up, I don't know how Carl Gables is now because that was many years ago. But that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons I live where I live because it is very, very, I don't know, friendly isn't, doesn't really cover it. It's very family kind of thing. You know, you really feel like you're yeah. part of something. Uh, sure. With with what has been happening for so long, more and more people are outside walking. So I uh, mm-hmm. I see more and more of my neighbors now. I've, I've met a couple of neighbors that are on the other side of the block. That, yeah, uh, exactly. You know, now, these are some of the positive changes we want to maintain. That's mm-hmm. right. That's yeah. right. Let's yeah. keep going out and walking together as families. That that stuff we should keep. Well, Ben, thank you for taking time to share with us this morning. I really oh, appreciate it. My pleasure. That. Thank you. You're a very nice man. I appreciate you taking the time. God, God bless you, my friend. Let me let Carolyn say goodbye to you, and we'll take a quick break. Thank you, Carolyn, for uh, inviting him. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, Ben, can you give us your cell phone contact information for our local listeners that might want to come out and uh, meet with you and talk with you? Sure. Folks in the Broward area can call me up at 786 786- Five one two nine seven nine zero. Send me a text or a call, or you can email me at elementalhc at gmail dot com. E L E M E N T A L H C at gmail dot com. Have a good Sunday. Say hi to everybody at home. Wish Thanks. you an awesome day, my friend. 
You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today do you have an unusual pet did you know that the rainforest clinic in loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets they see pets that other vets don't parrots and chickens ducks geese turtles snakes goats pigs lizards and even monkeys are you a beekeeper Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area, yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www. Dot S-U-S-A-N-C-L-U-B-B.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and... Best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre, simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do, and it would support the shows that we bring to you, and hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. Being a dad is an adventure full of special moments. A girl? Surprise! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing it all and on. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning, and thanks for joining us. It is truly an honor and a privilege to have you on. Uh, let me uh, say some thanks to some of our affiliates. First of all, our home network, WCETFM 101.7 out of Columbia. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. That is uh, our mothership, if you will. <laughs> and uh, you can find us at www.wcetfm.com. And uh, that's one of the ways you can listen to us. The other way you can listen to us is on Facebook. If you go to Facebook, Again, give us a like because that makes us relevant. Uh, click on Contact Us. If you click on Contact Us, it will connect you directly to our live server. Um, 
Another way you can listen to us is if you are anywhere in New York, uh, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania in the corner there, uh, High Point Radio 1690. They carry our show as well. Thank you, High Point Radio. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, KYAH 540 AM out of Utah. They will carry our show from time to time. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it there, KYAH. And our latest, Marina Rock Radio. Marina Rock is Yacht Rock's sister station out of Miami. Uh, Yacht Rock and Marina Rock are both tune-in stations. So if you have the tune-in app, that's another way that you can listen to us. And um, last but not least, I hopefully, now I've got fingers crossed, let me knock on some wood. Okay. Uh, probably within the next week, we will have the app available. And the app is absolutely free. It will be, well, I don't know how long it will be before it gets in the stores, but hopefully it will be in the stores. Uh, and it is a very simple, very straightforward app. It uses extremely minimal resources on your phone. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to listen to our network 24 hours a day, seven days a week, like having a, a radio, but the only thing is it's, it's not tunable to a whole bunch of stations. It's just on, on one station. Again, it's free. There's no push notifications. There's no commercials. None of that stuff. And we did that on purpose. We just wanted an easy way for people to be able to listen to the, sh- to the network and the shows on the network, and that's what we came up with. So hopefully in about a week or so, we will have the app. The app will be under WCETFM. And uh, you can find it there. Let me uh, welcome back Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Hello, Miss Carolyn. Well, hello again, and hello to our listeners. <laughs> and I believe we have. I, th- I wonder. You know, I just noticed that we had Ben Miller, and now we have dun, 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 Sean Miller. Are you guys related? <laughs> Are you related? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> and I thought about that last night. I figured it's Miller time. <laughs> Hey, well, a little early in the morning, but hey, what the heck, you know, with all that's going on, another way to relieve yourself for sure. Well, how are you, my friend? We haven't heard from you in a little while. How's things? Uh, definitely well, sir. I'm uh, glad to be back on the show again. It's uh, exciting. Are you doing some fishing out there? Um, yeah, um, uh, we've been out there. Our team's been out there consistently. Um, you know, with uh, we, we are a big tournament fishing team. You know, we've been getting into the circuit here for the past couple years now. Um, uh, but with all this going on, you know, that everything's been put on the, the back burner for, for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's a totally different culture for all of us that do a lot of tournament fishing, you know? Wow. And what's turning up out there? What have you, uh, what have you come up with so far? Well, um, you know, for, for our fishing club, uh, we created a, a digital, uh, social distancing tournament series going on right now. Uh, we started it about three weeks ago. And um, uh, we've been tracking all teams' fish where they've been catching, and the jumbo tunas are here. Wow. Um, uh, they're, they're bringing in some big tunas, uh, some big kings. The dolphins are starting to show up, but they're not quite here yet. You, you'll, you'll get some spot, scattered ones here and there. Um, but uh, the schools of them are not here. Uh, the big ones that you see, you know, the 50, 60-pounders aren't here yet. Um, hopefully soon, we're hoping. When you uh, when you say some big tuna, give me an idea. How many pounds are we catching? Uh, good size, 30, 35 pounds. Holy smokes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's a nice they're, size they're, tuna. They're big butter balls. Like oh, big my butter. gosh. Wow. Well, we'll have to uh, see if we can get some of that. Carolyn, you going to be doing any tuna fishing soon? <laughs> you know, I would like to uh, be fishing for something, and I'm not, I don't care what hits, but I'd love to get some tuna also. Uh, Sean, we went out yesterday for about 38 miles worth of uh, travel and didn't get totally skunked, but we were out fishing, though. And she said there's a lot of boats out there. Are you seeing a lot of boats out there, Sean? Um, I'm actually right now, my, uh, I'm running the back end on this tournament, so I'm, I'm on the computers. Okay. But um, uh, my team is out there. Uh, yesterday, they saw a lot of boats near the near the coast, not really out there fishing, mm-hmm. um, but uh, kind of enjoying their time with their families, it looks like. Um, I, I don't know really the, the county and city rules on uh, dropping anchors. Yeah. I haven't followed that that much because we, when we go out there on the water, we're, we're there to fish. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the, Carolyn, the, the, the tunas are there, and they're catching them on live bait. Just so you know, um, the teams that we've been following, and we usually have about 20 to 23 teams head out every Saturday morning. Wow. Um, the teams that are trolling, like light feathers, they're picking up the little football tunas sporadically. The teams that are dropping down uh, pilchards and gogs are picking up the jumbo ones. Wow. That's good to know. So if you're, mm-hmm. fishing, if you're fishing shallower, 
You're picking up the smaller ones is what you're saying? Yeah, if you're trolling around uh, with light feathers, you know, just uh, trying to pick up, you're, you're picking up small kings and you're going to pick up some small tunas. Uh, if, if you're dropping down flying kites, dropping down live bait, and that's just what they want. It's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're picking up the big one. Wow. I didn't realize that you had 20 boats out there doing this as well. And I take it they, are the, they have uh, the uh, Atlas tracks on the boats as well? Uh, we have several teams carrying the, the Atlas Tracks. My team uh, and a few other ones as well. Um, uh, one one of the biggest things with the Atlas Tracks, they came out and they, they upgraded their system to like the solar trackers and um, their alarm system, integrated alarm system. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I look forward to uh, showing um, the features uh, of, of this system to, to most of these teams and um, getting them uh, getting them involved in, and having them tracking, especially, you know, the past weekend – when they, as soon as they opened up the things, so I think we had a few sunken boats, um, especially with um, uh, was it uh, Haley Ryan that sunk out there in the Swordfish grounds? Um, I, I'm not quite sure if they had the, the tracking system on their boat, or uh, um, at least I'm hoping that they had um, an ACR uh, ACR EPIRB on there. But I mean, you never know. I mean, when things could go wrong, you mm-hmm. know. Well, the reason I'm asking is you said you're on the backside, you're on the computer, so I was wondering if you're on the computer watching them. What you know? What, what they're doing out there? Oh yes, they have. Um, we have our rules of our this tournament is that um, all every single catch before the gas shot needs to be the video needs to be turned on, and then all the way from the gas shot till it hits the boat, and then they literally have one hour to submit that video. Everyone submits the video immediately. Hmm. So I'm watching the real action from 20 teams as they're submitting. That's their awesome. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm revealing my age, but uh, there was a time when what we're talking about was like something out of science fiction. Being able to know where something is within 10 feet of anywhere in a planet, watching it on uh, what we would call back then a television. We didn't, we didn't have monitors back then. Uh, it's just uh, I'm constantly amazed by technology. I, I got turned on to it at very young a very young age, and, and it, is, it is kind of, in a way, been an addiction. It's something I just never can get enough of. Uh, and the more the, the more that I hear about some of the stuff that Carolyn comes up with, the more you know, amazed I am. Um, it's really neat. I, I can just imagine. You know, you said you're on the back end, you're on the computer, so you're on the computer, and not only are you seeing the videos, but you, you can look up on the app. You can see where they are, are actually are out in the ocean, how far offshore they are. I don't know if you can. can you tell. Um, how deep the water is? I guess you can tell how deep the water is in that area. I cannot. Um, I, I can only ask, you know, the, the feedback on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone that's, that's following this tournament series sees everything I'm seeing as well on Facebook, on our website. Oh, wow. We upload all the, the that. videos wow. that sync to the, the team. So say, say you happen to open up your phone and uh, you go to our, our Facebook and you say our, our live scoreboard, you click on that, you open it up, you can see the scoreboard uh, updating continuously. And if you look on the right-hand side, you actually see the video of that team catching that fish. At awesome. That time. Wow. Go ahead, go ahead, Carolyn. I know I'm sorry to cut you off. No, that's okay. I was going to say I just looked up the tracks for um, for Sean's boat yesterday, and I could tell you just because of the, the tracker on board, they left at 621. They got back at 420. They did 60.7 miles. They were out for nine hours and 54 minutes. I have every latitude and longitude in the furthest offshore, just by looking at my measuring tools, about just about nine miles offshore off of Delray Beach. So if you had to go find them, if they broke down or they ran out of fuel, it would be pretty easy to find wow. them. Wow. <laughs> like I said, peace and of mind. Out. You know, peace of mind. What kind of price can you put on a peace of mind? That's uh that's amazing. It really is. It's and, and again, within ten feet of anywhere, that's and that's the part that's just kind of. There's literally a web over the entire planet now, an an electronic web, uh, an invisible web, over the, the entire planet. That that's that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of neat in a way, uh, because nothing you know you can find anything that you need to find if you have one of these trackers with you, whatever it's on, whether it's a, a something as as a motorcycle or even a uh, an iceberg. I love the iceberg. <laughs> I can't get over that. So what are they, I'm just curious. Why do they follow the icebergs, Carolyn? They want to find out if what kind of current, water currents are happening with oh. global warming. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, Atlas tracks, we track what, what <laughs> aircraft, we track <laughs> icebergs. I love it. I love it. Well, Sean, oh, yeah. so it, this is going to be going on next weekend again, huh? Yes, every weekend. It's, it's a series of 16 of uh, 
preseason mini tournament leading up to the series playoffs, which is double elimination, and then the championship. If if anybody can anybody watch what's going on? Anybody. You oh, can go cool. to our website, you can go to Facebook, click on the live scoreboard and it pops up immediately. Okay, so let's let's give out the what's the website? Um you can either go to um offshore anglers at Pompano Beach dot org or you can go to our Facebook page, Offshore Anglers at Pompano Beach. They're both listed. Cool. So um I'm gonna be checking that out. It's Saturday and Sunday? Or it's just Saturday? Saturdays and Sundays. Cool. So you're, you're... No, 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 no. Saturdays. Saturdays only. Saturdays only. Okay. So I'll From be checking that out. 3 p.m. I'll be checking that out next weekend. I think it's neat that you're able to see what's going on, like almost like uh, having a reporter on site kind of thing, you know? That's yep. pretty cool. Well, you literally, it's, it's almost like having a reporter on 20 boats reporting continuously together. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, pretty cool. It, it, and, it's, and then at the end of the night, we do a recap video. We take all 20 teams' videos that they put in, all their fishes, and if you go to, on our website night or go to Facebook, you're going to see the Tournament 1 and Tournament 2 recap videos. They're about three, three, three and a half minutes long, but it has every team that caught fish in chronicle, chronological order in the video. Um, so you, all you're seeing is the action. You're not seeing the, the downtime or anything. Wow. That's a lot of work. <laughs> that just shows me the commitment you guys got. That's, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, well, the, the main reason we, we, we had to be creative because, uh, you know, we, once all this lifts with the, the, the COVID-19 lifts up, we want to be, uh, you know, right back in line to what our, our goal was with our foundation, and that was taking our kids fishing. Mm. Um, and, you know, donations, you know, are coming to a, a little a little stop, you know, because um, there is a lot more things going on in the world right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is one of them. By creating this tournament, you know, we have our entry and our entries. As soon as that comes in, we will be bringing these kids out as soon as it's allowed onto these drift boats, putting rods in their hands, and this is a way for us uh, to fund that. That's cool. That's one of my heartstrings, my friends, is uh, is the family and whatever family oh. activity we can do. And for me, fishing as a family was was a vital part of our family growing up. I really believe is what held us. It was kind of the glue that kept the relationships going uh, because we would do it regularly. It wasn't every once in a while. It was it was not uncommon for our family to be three or four times a month going together somewhere as a family fishing and that's that's one of the reasons i do the show is to give people that 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 option hey listen this is something that's available for you uh one of my regulars robert uh, robert with uh, florida fisherman magazine he likes to say uh put down the put down the xbox and pick up the tackle box kind of thing get back to nature um and there's so much to be for us to be uh u- utilizing once all of this this craziness begins to settle down. There's so much for us to utilize out there. I, we're surrounded by water. We're on three sides of the state. We've got tens of thousands of canals. We've got lakes. Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't enjoy water, you're in the wrong place because <laughs> this place is like a sponge. Uh, oh, well, Sean, thank you. I greatly appreciate uh, you taking the time to call in and letting us know what's going on. I'll have you back on with an update here. Um, Probably in the next couple, of, next couple of weeks or so, we'll, we'll get an update as to what's going on. And uh, let me let Carolyn say goodbye to you, and we'll go to a break. Thanks again, my friend. Wish you an awesome day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely, Rascala. You probably didn't know that Sean's daughter, Madison, is one of the winners of the coloring contest that we did on the Florida Ooh. Fisherman Magazine. So she's going to get herself a cool little pair of sunglasses from Salt Life. So thanks for uh, submitting that coloring contest. Oh, she was excited. It was a fun time. All right, my friend. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers. But that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on adoption, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ad Council. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. 
Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett-Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E-Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, good morning. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. I am your host, Riscala. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. And uh, what I like about Carolyn's stuff, well, it's peace of mind. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn over at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Good morning again, Riscala. Kind of caught her off base there, I could tell. <laughs> you, you did, absolutely. Well, uh, uh, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my next guest, Stephanie Lynn. Uh, this young lady is an inspiration. Um, she is someone that, uh, if you want to follow somebody who has, who's li- literally living a dream, you've got to talk to this young lady and, and watch her. She's on Facebook. Her name is Stephanie Lynn. She's a free dog. She's uh, many things, but one of the things that, uh, that caught my attention about her is she's a free diver, and she will literally free dive in the ocean with the sharks, petting sharks, doing crazy things like that. Swimming alongside of a 12-foot tiger shark is not uncommon for her, uh, and, and out there and spearing fish and catching fish and then sharing the harvest with uh, the locals at the, some of the end, islands that she goes to. And I think she's somewhere in the Bahamas this morning. Good morning, my dear. How are you? Good morning, Rosal. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. And where are you right now? Because I'm not sure where you're at. <laughs> we are on lockdown in the southern Bahamas um, on a pretty remote island right now. So the islands are on lockdown too? Oh, yeah. We're, so I actually... I purchased my catamaran and I moved it over to the Bahamas February 16th and we were on full lockdown a month later so we can't do any inter-island island sailing and we can't go to land. Oh my goodness. You can't, wait a minute, yeah. you, you can't go to land? Nope, we haven't been to land in almost two months. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how yeah. to respond to that. Wow. They, yeah, so, it's pretty intense. Oh, well, you, you caught me off guard with that one. Carolyn, say something. I, I don't know what to say. I, my, my God, I, but... I was just getting hungry thinking about it. So, <laughs> so, so you've got to be a really good fisherman or you're, you're obviously oh, she going is. to spear your own fish. And she does. Yes, yeah. Yes, we're, we're spear fishing about 
once or twice a week. It's uh, my boat, which I own with my friend Sabine, and then our other friend has another 46-foot monohull sailboat. And so we're quarantined together, and we go out spear fishing once or twice a week. And then every two to three weeks, um, a local on land will bring groceries to the dock for us just so we can get some fresh produce. But we're definitely living off the land right now. <laughs> I like that idea. I mean, I like the idea of living off the land, but the idea of, hey, you can't come on shore. <laughs> I don't like that idea. <laughs> that was a little well, shocking. Well, are like that right now. I, I got to tell you, that was a little shocking. When you said that, that, that really shook me. Well, what's the purpose of that? My gosh, don't they know that, you know, like you said with the groceries, do you, I'm going to ask you a silly question. Do you, do you long to go back on land to feel the... I know for me, I was, I was uh, coming over here when I was a child from uh, another country. I was on a boat for a month. And I couldn't wait to get my feet back, wow. back on the ground again. <laughs> um, no, no, I really what, don't miss land. What island are you at? Uh, we're Southern Exumas right now. Okay. Yep. So we're just uh, we're pretty remote. There is one grocery store. Um, we can't get any fuel. The fuel docks are closed. So oh uh, there are a couple of um, deserted islands where we are. So every now and then we'll we'll jump off and go go put our feet in the sand. But other than that, we're not really craving land life. It's been nice. The only problem is just not being able to move. Yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're just stuck. But luckily we have a dinghy and we can go out spear fishing uh, and go out diving. So we've had some really incredible diving experiences the last couple of weeks. Well, I saw some of the dolphin i think it was. was was it just recently you posted about a dolphin you got yeah yeah we just went out for an afternoon swim and there was a pot of dolphin and they came and hung out with us for about 30 minutes and yeah. were super playful and interactive no i'm i'm talking about the mahi mahi dolphin you you had a post of a oh yeah no that was my um that was one from about a year oh yeah, okay a little over a year ago that was the world record that i thought when my friends challenged me to post kind of a throwback picture but recently we shot some we uh pull speared some really nice hogfish and that was i saw that adventuring quite a story yes that was very <laughs> that was very admirable that was some nice looking fish there now so how do you cook yeah do, we, i take you cook on the on on the boat we cook on the boat so a lot of times we'll um we have an oven so we can bake them or oh, we'll cool. go to one of the deserted islands and cook over a fire yeah Oh, so you can go on land. You just can't go on the main, quote, mainland. You can go on one of the deserted islands. They can't bug you there, right? Exactly. Well, that helps. <laughs> that yeah, helps. it does. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I don't know very many people at, uh, in your age group that have been able to, to do what you do, and it truly is an inspiration. Um, putting aside the insanity that we're going through right now, one of the things that uh, inspires me about you is that you go teach other people what you know how to do. You're a free diver, and um, you're also a, a teacher at free diving. And then you not only teach people, but then, I don't know if you're still doing this, but you would go to other places, uh, islands and stuff like that, and uh, do your do your thing out there, and, and then share the harvest with the locals. Now, see, that's something that I think is really, really awesome, to be able to go out and yeah. share with other people of a different, completely different society. And... Uh, be able to do that, I think it's just really, it's heartwarming. Um, if people yeah. want to see what we're talking about, I know that uh, you're on Facebook. Is it under Stephanie Lynn? Yep, Stephanie Lynn. And on Instagram, it's Freediver Steph. Say it again, Freediver? Freediver Steph. So just Freediver and then S-T-E-P-H. Okay, Freediver Steph. And it's, it's L-Y-N-N. Um, I would suggest to all of you on the other side of the microphone, go take a look at Stephanie Lynn on Facebook. You'll see what I'm talking about. Beautiful young lady, but the beauty, the, the real beauty from, from this young lady isn't just on the outside. It comes from the inside out. That's the inspiring part. She's, she's just somebody that believes in humanity. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that we need today. It really is. I, I didn't realize that you were under such a controlled, you know, I thought that where you were, you had a, a, a higher degree of freedom. I, got, I don't know. I can't find the right words. Yeah. But I didn't realize that. The, <laughs> the Bahamas are really, really strict with the lockdown. And um, I haven't 
because the borders aren't aren't open, I haven't been able to teach or do any trips on the boat. But we've been spearfishing, and the locals who bring us groceries to the dock will will give them some fish. So we're still able to give back to the local community cool. as much as we can right now. But we're hoping things open up in the next couple of weeks. I, th- I think that we are kind of headed in that direction. Uh, more and more here in Florida, uh, they're talking about opening up more and more. Jacksonville opened up its uh, beaches on a limited basis. We have uh, boat ramps opening up uh, in the southern part. Um, and there's boat ramps opening up over on the west coast, I believe. Uh, so more and more, we're getting closer to having, I, I don't know that we'll ever be normal again, but having, you know, getting closer to that, that again, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, so I looked at the map this morning. I typically do I look at the map and I do a, a marine report and uh, it looks like it's just a beautiful day off of our shore. Are you experiencing the same thing? Because I know you're not too far away. No, nope, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, where I am, the water is crystal clear, mm. super warm. We've had a couple of windy days, but every day we're in the water. We're, we're free diving and, and spear fishing and we've had some Really cool interaction. Saw a bunch of sharks. We had a about a 12-foot tiger shark under our boat about a week ago. We had a hammerhead come in when we shot a couple fish last week. So we're seeing all the wildlife. We're, we're very blessed. We're in a very fortunate place right now. There are some of the most amazing, most uh, just amazing, as I, I don't even know how to, to describe them, of this young lady <clears throat> doing a variety of things. If it's not like a 12-foot alligator, I'm not exaggerating. How, how big was that alligator, <laughs> Stephanie? Yeah, he, he was 300 pounds and a little over 10 feet. Yeah, okay. So I was close. A 10-foot alligator. She's swimming with a 10-foot alligator. Or she's petting, I, I don't remember what kind of shark it was, but she's literally petting a shark like you would pet a, a dog or a cat underwater. <laughs> and on top of that, she's not wearing tanks, you guys. She, this is free diving. She's doing all this free diving. It's just amazing to watch some of the things that she does. There are some just unbelievable pictures of her on underwater. One of them that comes to mind, she's sitting at a piano. Somebody took a picture of her mm-hmm. with a piano underwater. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually quarantined. So one of my friend, Andre Musgrove, he is the photographer who took that, that photo in particular. And he had jumped on our boat to come. We were going to do a couple photos and do a a trip in the Bahamas and go to some remote islands and then the Bahamas got locked down so he's been quarantined on our boat so we've been having fun taking really creative photos there will be some new content coming out soon and then the the one picture now that I'm thinking was that you put up not too long ago uh you were walking looked like you're uh walking a tightrope underwater is that out there in the Bahamas yep that was him too yeah. yeah, yeah. That, and then it's like there's a, a ledge, and then it just goes dark, and you go, you know, when you go over that yeah, ledge, that's it's, deep water. <laughs> that's seriously deep water. <laughs> it's a blue, it's a blue hole, and we do a lot of our free dive training in blue holes because it's immediate depth, so you can get down hundreds of feet very quickly. So we go there to do a lot of training, and um, I saw that line, and Andre, Andre had a vision, and so I just. I took my fins off, and I, I exhaled, and I walked across it, and he snapped that photo. That was pretty cool. It turned out pretty cool. He, he has a, a, a good taste for being in the right place to get the, just the right perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he does a really awesome job of taking pictures of you. And of course, you, <laughs> having a nice model to do it helps, but uh, he does a, a good <laughs> job. I really do think he does a great job of, of just really amazing pictures, you guys. Go on Facebook and you'll see what I'm talking about. You you won't believe some of this stuff. The picture, when I saw her, again, I'm, I'm going back to petting the shark. The shark's got his mouth open and she's petting the shark. That's no big deal. <laughs> this shark, how big was that shark? <laughs> um, that one was about 10 that so was actually not... the first time I ever met Andre, and we jumped in the water. We had never dove together, and we went there specifically to do uh, photos with the sharks. And we jumped in the water, and the, sh- the tiger shark came straight up off the bottom towards me. So I dove down to meet it head on, and I put my hand <laughs> on her nose to redirect her. And after I redirected the shark, I looked over, and Andre was there with his camera just snapping away. And we were like, all right, we're going to get along just fine. So... That was the very first picture he ever took of me. Oh, my gosh. Carolyn, did, <laughs> Carolyn, did you hear what she just said? Yes, I did. And, you know, I have to ask you, because um, I'm, I'm on your Facebook page now, and the pictures are stunningly beautiful. I mean, anything underwater you're doing is almost like a ballet. So, it is, so yeah. I, yeah. I mean, people have to go look at this stuff. Do you um, make base camp on down where you are at Gazumas, or do you, do you 
move around because yeah. you have the ability with your with your sailboat? Yeah. So, I mean, long story short, I worked in corporate America over 10 years, saved up a bunch of money and had always had a dream of buying a catamaran and sailing to the islands and living off the ocean. And so uh, in December, I made the jump and I purchased my catamaran in December, moved it over to the Bahamas in February. So I'm here full time now in the Bahamas. I don't really have a, a base camp. My catamaran, it's 46 feet. So it's basically the base camp. And um, I just bopped around with my friend Sabine and, and now Andre's on the boat from we were going island to island and that's kind of the plan is just to get lost in the most beautiful place in the world and start to hopefully invite people to come check off their bucket list and face their fears and accomplish things they didn't think were possible through teaching free diving and doing shark interactions and shark education and then sustainable spearfishing. So that's the whole goal um, after things open back up and we're able to actually have people come experience this because everybody's afraid of a shark until they spend five, 10 minutes in the water with one. And then the, you just appreciate them. The, the fear is completely gone after that interaction. I, I think that if I were in the water <laughs> with a shark, uh, one of two things would happen. I would be walking on water or I would be changing my underwear. It's gotta be one of the two. <laughs> oh my God. It, what really caught me was I, I'm, I see the shark swimming up to me. So I decide I'm going to jump in and swim down the shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord have mercy that um but see that tells me in my experience of life that you have a unique vibration about you because uh, again it's we're talking about we know that the sharks can be extremely deadly that's, there's no question about that but yet here we have a human and a shark reaction interaction between the two and yet both of them come away i, I think that shark was happy to have you pet that shark um it, it almost yeah, it, yeah if, we spent two more hours in the water with her if it were possible was, for for a shark really to calm. smile i think that shark would smile i really do i'm not, I'm not exaggerating <laughs> you got to see the picture carolyn did you see the picture of her petting the shark no i'm looking for that okay. one uh, you have to tell me what date it's on but I'm, uh, it's I'm a while back incredibly yeah. stunning photos yeah, and there's another mm -hmm. one with her swimming alongside of a tiger, sh a tiger shark, and then there's the one with the or the alligator. Yeah. That it's just uh, this individual is an inspiration because of not because of what she says, because of what she does. She lives her dream. She worked for corporate America. She saved her money. She wanted a boat. She wanted to live off of the land. She fulfilled her dream, and now she's living. She fulfilled her request, and now she's living her dream. Um, it's amazing. It's inspiring. And, uh, you know, I, I know it's not nice to ask your age, but I think that you're probably in your 30s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm 33. I have children that are that age, and, and they're nowhere. <laughs> they haven't been able to achieve half of what you've been able to achieve. Again, it's an inspiration to see someone of your age be able to do what you're doing and to live that. I, my gosh, I'd love to be able to, if it were possible for me to live on a – I don't know if, how long it would last on a boat and not be able to go on shore, but, you know, to, to have, when all this is gone, to have that normalcy back where you can come and go as you want, my goodness, that is truly a dream come true. And I am ever so inspired by you. I, I love telling people about you because you don't find a lot of people like Stephanie. You really don't. This Again, I, I think about what she does, when, and she teaches people how to free dive. I'm just out of curiosity, how, what is your depth? I don't know what, what you call it. But what is How far down can you go? I go a little past 30 meters, so a little past 100 feet. you got to be joking me. breath four and a half minutes. Holy but, smokes. Um, but most of our diving is between like... I'd say most of our diving is between 60, 60 and 80 um, is what we spend most of our time at. Yeah. My When I teach a level one course, everybody can hold their breath two minutes and everybody can hang out at 50 feet. It, your body's designed to do it. It's just a matter of telling your mind that you're capable of doing it. So it's, it's honestly the best mental training wow. that you'll get ever. That's why I love teaching so much. I love teaching anybody. Um, executives, children, athletes, everybody can apply this to their everyday life because once you realize that you're capable of so much more than your brain belie your brain believes, it just opens doors for potential. Well, you are certainly an example of that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I can't think of a better example right now uh, than some of the stuff that I've seen you do. Just truly, truly amazing. Thank you so much for taking time to share with us. I want to, uh, you know, I'll touch base with you. Hopefully when all this settles down, I want to get you back on some, and uh, we'll do some updates about some, you, know, you have a little more freedom to go about and do uh, do some more fishing. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have a bunch of pictures to show as well. Yep. 
Well, I wish you an awesome Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Let me let Carolyn say goodbye to you. We'll go to a quick break. Thanks again, Stephanie. I wish you an awesome day, my friend. Thanks. Stephanie, Thanks. I would love to. When the quarantine's over, I would love to catch a flight from South Florida and come over and do a little spear fishing with you. Amazing. I would love having you, Carolyn. That would be that would be awesome. We have some really cool spots, and we can put you on some great fish. Be safe. All right. God bless. Here All we right. go. Be safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that is if it'll work. What happened? Oh. There we Bye. go. Bye. Right back. <laughs> Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today do you have an unusual pet did you know that the rainforest clinic in loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets they see pets that other vets don't parrots and chickens ducks geese turtles snakes goats pigs lizards and even monkeys are you a beekeeper dr club the first of her kind in the area yes she takes care of bees as well Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and best of all if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you you can get one for free that's right a free audiobook of your choice in any genre simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial it's simple to do and it would support the shows that we bring to you and hey you get a free book out of the whole thing so why not take advantage of it today go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial being a dad is an adventure full of special moments. A group! Right. Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing in Florida. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is Fishing in Florida. I am your host, Riscala. It is an honor and a privilege, truly, to have you listen in and allow us to share with you some of the stuff that we've come across. I, I really enjoyed having our guests this morning. 
uh, Ben Miller and Sean Miller, and no, they're not uh, related. And as Carolyn says, it's probably Miller time. <laughs> and uh, Stephanie is uh, just an inspiration. Some of these people that we uh, that I have an opportunity to come across and uh, that I have met by doing this show is truly inspirational. And my next guest uh, falls right along that line. But before I do that, let me welcome back my co-host. I apologize. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Absolutely, Scala. Nice to be back. Um, my next guest, <clears throat> if I can keep my <clears throat> throat going here, is Rob Robinson. Rob has uh, a unique story that uh, was really heartwarming. Uh, he ran into a life-changing event, and I'll let him uh, tell you a little bit about that. Welcome, Rob. Thanks for taking time to call in. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me on this morning. Go ahead, Carolyn. Good morning. Uh, Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Rob, tell us a little bit about uh, the life-changing event that uh, you went through. Uh, well, I, I live in Mississippi. I am a fire, was a firefighter for 19 years. I'm a huge outdoorsman, and uh, uh, my sister moved to Kansas, and I started going to Kansas deer hunting. And after several years of deer hunting out there, I was seeing all these turkeys, and I said, well, let's take up turkey hunting second year i turkey hunted in kansas i killed the state record turkey as number seven in the world hmm. and uh i always heard about this grand slam so the next year i went out in western kansas and uh after a different species of turkey and knocked on a farmer's door and i uh, got permission to hunt and didn't see him for three years later. I'm knocking on his door again. This time I asked him to pitch a tent in his yard, and he invites me to stay in his house. But I'm outdoors, so I pitch a tent in his yard for five days, and uh, I'm hunting. He's farming. We have some meals together. He lets me shower. This time he's on, on dialysis. And when I left, we stayed in contact. And the next year I got tested as a match, and I donated him a kidney. Wow. Just like that. No big deal. Just donated one of my kidneys. <laughs> you talk about inspiration. A lot of folks say, well, you know, I guess you got a place to hunt forever. But, you know, it was, it was just one of the easiest things I ever did. And uh, for my love of the outdoors and me donating a kidney, I'll form Forever Outdoors, where our main mission is promote organ donation, but also do outdoor adventure for organ donor, recipient, veterans, kids, uh, cancer survivors. We've done adventures all the way from Florida to Washington State for different people. And we finally filed for our nonprofit status and uh, getting that up and going. Uh, just got a website up and running this past week. Uh, mainly run everything through Facebook. We have over 92,000 people on our page, and we've signed up over 15,000 people to be organ donors. Hot dog. Now, wow, the, that's amazing. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Kelly. I wanted to ask him about the, the Facebook page is Forever Outdoors. Is that correct? Mm, Forever Outdoors. And you mentioned a website. Do you have the website up? It, 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 I do have it up, and the link to it's on our Forever Outdoors page, and we ha have a way that you can donate through uh, our website now. And awesome. We've got a lot of adventures planning on in Florida. We've got some fishing adventures planning in Florida, and would like to connect with some maybe organ donors and recipients who would like to go fishing with us in Florida, uh, you know. Everybody doesn't have that ability to, you know, get out or have money to get out or a boat to go out. Mm -hmm. we are got some captains that's going to be donating some trips for us this year. And we have you set up a day to do it. Have you, do you know where you're going to be when you get down to Florida? Um, no. Not yet? And maybe Siesta Key. Oh, okay. So there's a couple of those that we got to schedule up. Well, I, I think you may have broke up. So I heard Siesta Key. Was there somewhere else? Uh, Siesta Key and Port Orange right Port now. Port Orange, okay. Cool. 
Well, I, you know, keep in touch with me as you get down closer to Florida, because if you're somewhere nearby, I'd like to meet you. I, uh, you're an inspiration. You truly are an inspiration. Uh, the, the people that we've had on today, it's, it, you know, it's funny. I didn't plan it that way, and, and Carolyn and I don't discuss, you know, we don't say, okay, let's get this person. He's inspirational. Let's get this person. He's a good fisherman. We just kind of work between the two of us, and it worked out that today's show really is all about inspiration. Uh, I'm, that's what I'm getting out of the show today. Uh, you know, fishing is inspirational, but the people that we've had, we had Ben Miller. He was telling us how, uh, ways that we can help ourselves going through this. Uh, I like the way he looks at it, through this change and uh, how, how to make the change work for, for us as, as good as possible. We had uh, Sean Miller who was telling us about, hey, guys, we're still fishing out here, and uh, we're still working together. And we had uh, Stephanie who is, again, an inspiration, somebody who had a dream and, and now living her dream. Rob Robinson, who oh, just out of, out of the kindness of his heart decides to donate a kidney to a man he really didn't, didn't know per se. I mean, wasn't related to him. A man who was just generous enough to let him spend some time on his farm one time. And out of that came a kidney and saved the man's life. Amazing. Truly amazing today. Um, I, don't think, I don't think we could have planned it this way, Carolyn. You know, I'm, I've never, I'm not usually speechless, but with every guest I am. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, these stories are so inspirational and, uh, well, so, really is, uh, you know, just loving loving things that people are doing. That's, and I think we need that right now with all the, the things that we're going through and this, this kind of, I keep referring to this insanity that's, in the, that's happening to us. I think we need to hear some of this stuff because there is a lot of it going on. Unfortunately, what's in the spotlight is, is the opposite. So uh, today has been a real... A real shining day for me, even uh, even though it's still in the morning. Uh, wow. Well, Rob, have you, did you do any fishing this last week? Because I know that's one of the things you like to do. Uh, I've been trying. I haven't had much luck. We, we're we getting a lot of rain. I live 45 minutes from Grenada Lake, which is the best crappie lake in the world for big crappie. But it's flooded out, and it's just we've gotten too much rain. Mm. I mean, it's been hard. It's been hard. Oh, my goodness. And and we are just now starting to get into the pattern. We've been relatively, overall, I think we're relatively dry. We haven't had those crazy boomers, uh, except for last week. We didn't have a good one. But in between them, it's, it's been, the span has been pretty long. It's not As we get closer to, to summer, we have them, the span between them is, gets shorter and shorter. Right now, it's still we still got a distance between them, but uh, it's been some beautiful weather here in Florida. Some of the stuff that uh, we live here for, um, nice, cool, crisp mornings. Not too hot during the day. Of course, we had a couple of them here in this last week where I thought it was an oven. Somebody left the oven on. But generally speaking, it's been very comfortable uh, where we're at. Unfortunately, with this, all this, the uh, amount of ability for us to be able to do different things, uh, as this lifts, it'll be better for us. But right now, we're some of the stuff we just can't do yet. We're still waiting to be yeah. able to do. Um, yeah. now, you mentioned Mississippi. So Mississippi is on lockdown, too. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, we're we're able to fish and stuff. Uh, they had some light, they can have some lakes closed down. But What about boat yeah, ramps? We're able to get out and fish. And, and boat ramps open? Uh, most of them are. Good. Most of them are. Uh, but as as you got a lot of people fishing, it's it's hard. With yeah. all, I mean, everybody fishing. I mean, well, I mean, Carolyn uh, mentioned something about it um, earlier in the show today. Where uh, was it, Carolyn? I think it was Carolyn. Um, where you know we've kind of slacked off here. We haven't been able to enjoy the uh, the ocean as much as we'd like to because there's been a bit of restriction on that. And as they have reduced the restrictions and more boats are going out there, she went fishing and she said, you know, probably shocked the fish because it's been, it's, generally speaking, I'm sure the fish feel it was relatively quiet because we didn't have the normal amount of boats out there. And all of a sudden we have a rush of boats and probably chased all the fish away with everybody yeah. fishing at the same time. So maybe you're experiencing the same thing. Where Have you had an area, a, a time where everything has been a real lull where nothing's, you know, like here we've, we've experienced in Florida for a lot of us, all the boat ramps were closed. You couldn't even put your boat in the water. So you couldn't get out. Uh, and then as they opened up the boat ramps, of course, we go back to that rush where everybody was down the boat. Did you experience that too? Did they shut the boat ramps down where you're at? Uh, they did s- shut down some like their state and their government 
boat ramps and stuff. So, uh, I could, I went to fish to a lake yesterday and a lake was closed, you know, hmm. so everything's not opened up, but I mean, there is a lot of places to fish. But my question though is, did you go through a period where they were shutting everything down? Where I guess what I'm asking is, was there a period where nobody was fishing? Basically, were very few to no, know. Oh, no, okay. yeah. no, there wasn't a complete shutdown. We we didn't have a complete shutdown like that. The fishermen that were out there were commercial, so all the recreational, all the private people, which is the majority of the fishermen here, were not out there. That was the experience that we went through, and I was wondering if you were, you know, kind of seeing something like that happening where you were. So what does it look like uh, in the next week or so? Is it going to dry up for you? Are you planning on going out and doing some more fishing? Oh, yeah. It's, it's finally supposed to get some warm weather and not not rain. I mean, we've been dodging tornadoes. and Holy smokes. <laughs> it's, been, it's been bad. Oh, my you gosh. Know, I mean, it, it's got the lakes really, really high. And... uh it ought to help the fish because they're not going to be able to, I mean, the crop is spawning right now, and they're not getting hurt by the fishermen. Yeah. There's a lull out there. That's what I was saying. It's like what we have out here where we are. There was a lull where there wasn't a whole lot of people out there like there usually is. And uh, then all of a sudden people start showing up. I think it kind of freaked the fish out. <laughs> oh, my God, you hear all that noise? Let's get out of here. I could just imagine. All right, well, my friend. You know, Rizala, yesterday, um, I just real briefly, there was a wee line so many miles long and, and big enough that you could step on it. There was nothing underneath any of it. So I agree with you. They all, they all scattered. <laughs> Chased them all off. Uh, all right, Robert, thank you so much for taking time to call in. Truly, you are an, another one of the people that uh, today are you know, an inspiration to us, somebody who would just, you know, give, literally give of themselves to someone else they're not related to, just a friend, so to speak, an acquaintance, more or less. Uh, truly an inspirational story. I wish you well, my friend. God bless you. Let me let uh, Carolyn say goodbye, and then we're going to go to a break. Thank you, my friend. All right. Rob. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. That was an amazing story. Thank you for participating in the tight lines out there in Mississippi. All right. You're yeah. listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion, air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Call or email us today. Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. 
or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee, 561-795-4878. GTG, BRB, OMW, be there in a few. You may think that these kinds of texts are fine because of their length, and you can easily send them at a stoplight. But no, answering one text can take your attention away from the road for five seconds. And traveling at 55 miles an hour, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Make good decisions, don't text and drive. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, good morning. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. We are back. And uh, this morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks as my co host. And uh, I like to say about Carolyn. If you want to protect what you love to the max, you got to talk to my friend Carolyn over at Alice Tracks. Welcome back, Miss Carolyn. Good morning again, Riscala. Inspirational today, truly inspirational. And I really didn't plan it that way, and I know you didn't plan it that way. It's just the way that it worked out, and I'm really, really honored to have uh, some of these people on that we're on today. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, I think about the, this last one, Rob. <laughs> you know, um, he, he told a story pretty quick, but um, what he... It was about hunting. He went hunting on this thing. He asked permission, like he said, uh, and he only spent, uh, the first time he was there, he only spent a couple of days and never spent, he never went inside the man's house. Uh, what am I trying to say? He didn't spend the night inside the man's house. He util- At the second visit, he did allow him to go in and, sh- and shower, but he offered that in the beginning. What I'm trying to say is that the, it, it, uh, Rob was extremely humble throughout this thing. Uh, and the first time that he told me his story, I was going, holy smokes, man. <laughs> and it was like, no big deal. Just like he did just now. Yeah. I gave him my, my, my kidney. <laughs> wow. I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was going to go to a, Hey, he helped him put a fence up or, you know, build a dock for the guy. I, I wasn't expecting, I gave him my kidney. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, again, I, I don't, we didn't plan it that way, ladies and gentlemen. It's just that's just the way it worked out, and I'm grateful for that because uh, that's the kind of thing we, I'd like to hear about every once in a while. With all of this uh, that we're going through, it, it helps. It truly helps. And then to have, uh, you know, have somebody like Ben, who uh, he seems like a very calm individual. You know, you could be really upset, and he would be the one that would all he has to do is just not really even say anything, just kind of show up, and his presence around you just kind of brings a calming effect. He's an amazing gentleman, and when I go in there, the first thing he does is feel my pulse, and he can feel it going crazy. Mm. And he'll do some of his just soothing and talking, just like he did on the radio here today. And uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's amazing. His outlook on things being everything is for a good reason. Don't look at it as a bad reason. We'll get through this. He's just a very calming, soothing gentleman, and I thought he'd be perfect for hey, it, You know, for today, it, it worked out perfect. It really did. Because I know, or I shouldn't say I know, I'm sure if there's anybody out there that feels like I feel, you get... It's kind of difficult. You you're at home, and we're, you know, we can't uh, we can't go out and about like we used to before, uh, and it it does. It gets on your nerves after a while. It wears on you. Uh, to have somebody to know that there's somebody like that, to have somebody that you can bounce that off of, that's awesome. Um, I did acupuncture many 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 years ago. Um, I was deathly afraid of needles. I was surprised how painless. Uh, when they do it, the people who know how to do it, you, you really, you have to, you, what am I trying to say? It's almost like you have to feel for the needle going in. Um, because if you're not paying attention, you don't know that they're doing it. Uh, I don't recall how many times I did it. I think it was just a couple of times and it was for a problem I was experiencing with my back. Uh, I think it helped again. It was so long ago. I only did it a couple of times. Um, but I can tell you the second time I think it was, Oh my gosh, I didn't expect to fall asleep. I fell asleep on, during the session. I, I became so relaxed from what they were doing. I actually fell asleep. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. So has that happened to you? 
And you fall asleep yeah. and get so relaxed? Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some of the needles stay in for a short period of time, and sometimes he just puts them in and takes them right back out. And he mm. does another treatment that's really neat, too. He actually takes some hot, if you can imagine, uh, incense. It smells like incense, and he puts it so close to your skin that it almost creates a little blister. You tell him when it's too hot to take it off. And those those trigger points, too, are for cleansing and being strong or, you know, uh, helping you sleep or not having pain. So he's, he does a whole bunch of traditional Chinese medicine that, you know, it's just amazing when you when you just have that whole experience with him for 45 minutes or an hour or any acupuncturist, uh, uh, herbal re- remedy person. It's just, you, you leave with a different frame of thought than when mm. you went in. That's the wow. wonderful thing about it. There is something to be said about um, people who use, I want to say like old school or old time, they they don't use the traditional medicines that we are run across from day to day. They have uh, organic, if you will, maybe that's a better way to describe it, ways of dealing with pain or emotional stress and things of that nature. And I enjoy that. I like that because I'm somebody who's who had to have brain surgery at a very young age. At 32, I had to have brain surgery. So ever since that time in my life, I've been very careful uh, about what goes into the body. Right now, I'm not very happy because I had emergency heart surgery a year ago and some of the drugs that they have me on I'm not very pleased about but I'm working slowly working my way out of it through an organic means uh, similar to what um, Ben was was talking about but using herbs and things of that nature they're available if you'll take the time to look and find them and some of the things that are available to us that that you would laugh at that will actually stop a lot of things Uh, I'm somebody who's had to deal with cancer twice in my life I decided not to go the main route. I didn't want, I, I, my dad had cancer and I, and I watched what he went through and I went, oh my gosh. And that was the experience of my life. Even though everybody doesn't have the same experience, that was my experience. And so it put a real scare in me, a real scar in my mind that I didn't want to go down that route. I don't, I didn't care. I wasn't going to go down that route. So I didn't. And as a result, I was able to take care of it. So I know that using organic means, using simple means can help in some cases. And whenever it, that is possible, that is my choice. Like right now, I don't have any choice. I, I, these, these medicines that they have me on, I need to take them for a period longer. I'm going to do that. But there's going to come a time when I won't need that anymore. And I'll be able to, uh, I won't need any of it anymore. Because the way I'll, I'll work it out is we will not manage this is the, the main issue that I have with health care today. It's all about management. Uh, we've gotten away from cures. It's, that's the difference. When What Ben was talking about is curing. What uh, the, the general medical establishment talks about is managing. We'll manage this for you. We'll, we'll manage this. We'll manage that. There's, no, uh, there's not a whole lot of money in curing people. When we speak about people who use organic means, that's a different, it's a different approach. Um, and I enjoy that. I, I, whenever possible, I would always go back to utilizing whatever is available that is organic that assimilates in your body versus something that's man-made that your body has to fight with. And regardless of what it is, your body, there's a degree of toxicity in any of these things that they call medicine. There's a degree of toxicity in it. That degree of toxicity doesn't exist when you're talking about organic materials, you know, whatever, whatever that, that might be. There's a, a wide variety of herbs and, and, um, and, and even spices that people use to help um, take care of things. My mom used to, I can't remember what she used to put on my forehead. I would, I, occasionally, I would get a headache as a child. And she used to rub something on my, I think it was peppermint or spearmint or something. And it worked. It would get rid of the forehead. Uh, get rid of the forehead. Get rid of the, the, um, the headache. Uh, so it's just something I never really took aspirin as a child. I really didn't have things like that around the house. I guess we were a little different than a lot of people, but we we did things more along the organic line. But I guess again because my parents came, my mom came from a different country, and they believed in passing down everything. You, know, they, you drink this if you have a sore throat. You. One of the things when I would get a sore throat that I used to hate <laughs> telling my mom I had a sore throat, she would uh, take lemon and salt and put the and warm the water up, put it in a little water, warm it up, and then have me garlic with that. Garlic, have me gargle with that. Have me garlic with that. Have me gargle with that. And uh, believe it or not, that it, as horrible as that was, it would take the pain away for a brief period of time. I wouldn't have that sore throat. It would actually help me heal again. And 
Today we have all these things that you can take. You got to be careful because if you have this underlying condition, if you take too much of that, this may have an effect on that underlying condition. Salt and lemon <laughs> isn't going to have a whole heck of a lot on an underlying condition that I'm aware of anyway. So I'm always eager to, to go down that line. And it's just the well, way that it worked out today. A, it's even amazing with, with vitamins. If you look at a vitamin yeah. container, and so many people are taking vitamins and supplements, there's actually an oil in the vitamins, and it's a binder, and they use the same oil to bind soap together. Mm. So, I mean, over time, how good could that be for your body? Yeah. So, you know, I agree. Mm. When you go into a place with a herbalist and you have all these fun jars up on a, on a hutch and you open them up and there's loose leaves of you can make tea with them or you know smell them and just the fragrance just you know where our bodies are equipped from sight and from smell and to yeah. smell these just Ar makes you feel better aromatherapy um i i know i have a friend of mine who is a um um they work on <laughs> you know i'm this morning my mind is like oh my gosh it's just like gone he's a chiropractor and uh, one of the things he does is aromatherapy. You walk into his office, the one office, as you're waiting for for service, they have this stuff going on. And it, it is. It's very relaxing. Um, so you can do it through smell. You do it through. And there's sounds that are going on. They play sounds like um, uh, gentle uh, ocean waves breaking, that kind of music, or water running. Um, it just ways, different ways that you can naturally get yourself to relax. Um, is available. I, it's, for me, I, in my world, it's kind of like you get caught up in an emotional tornado with, like, oh my gosh, this, and oh my gosh, that. And I, I, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? Because of all this that's going on around us, it's uh, difficult to stop for a moment and go, wait a minute, you know, just relax and chill out. So it was a, a real enjoy. I really did enjoy having uh, Ben on. I think I'm going to ask him to come on again. I may even have him on uh, the other show. Uh, because there's yeah. that's a lot of information for people there. And, you know, we didn't even touch on him. In, in, in his spare time between he does the herbalist, he does Taiko Thailand drumming, and it's amazing. It's If you can imagine uh, that they're artists, they put the headband on, and they have these huge uh, drums and these big sticks, and they're overhead drumming. I sent you some videos wow. to look at. Oh, and really? they're doing it with a certain cadence. Uh, their child is 10 years old. He was a taiko drummer when he was like three years old. And there's YouTube videos that we'll post up of him, uh, you know, with these little sticks in his hand on these big drums and and doing this, this traditional uh, drumming. And I, you'll see it and you'll see how much energy they exert. And uh, it's pretty amazing. We, uh, You know, I'll post up one of Ben's um, uh, drumming and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. They do that. Um, they train. They go out to Broward Performing Arts. They go out to this beautiful Japanese garden and uh, Bo Coffee Yamato, they do pre they do presentations there. Uh, it's pretty amazing to see. That is awesome. So I, I'm I'm not clear about it. is it more than one drum that's going on when they do this? Or is it just yeah? One? They'll have three to four big drums if you can imagine old big cymbals. So there'll be three to four of them wow. in front of each drummer. That's a diameter of two feet to four feet. Oh my And God. they'll they'll play them all like huge bongos, and there'll be multiple drummers doing different cadences. Um, sometimes they're done to the flamenco dancers. There's, uh, you know, just so the girls are dancing, the drummers are drumming. Uh, you'll have two, one to three drummers uh, up there, each beating uh, anywhere from three to four drums themselves. It's beautiful, wow. all in traditional Japanese um, attire. It's amazing. Where do they do this at? Uh, normally, well, they're all uh, sequestered right now and shut down, but he'll do the Broward uh, Performing Arts, but usually they'll do the outdoor gardens in Boca Raton off of Yamato. Mm -hmm. There's a Murakami Japanese garden there that's a pretty amazing um, tribute to the Japanese culture, and they'll go do outdoor uh, concerts there. Even Sky, their young child, will go out there and do some drumming. But he was, uh, they were drumming uh, uh, when he was two and three years old. It's pretty amazing. I, we'll post it up on the on the Facebook page, Fishing in Florida. Uh, it's amazing to see how they brought their children. They're bringing their boy up through the same thought and, and tradition that they have. And Ben's wife is Thai, so she's from Thailand. That's amazing. And, and drumming, I know from experience, um, it can have an effect, a literally a physical effect. You know, it's like when you go to a concert. You hear the drums. At the concert, over the loud guitars and, and everything else, you can still hear those drums, and the drums carry the beat. They they carry the music for you. The same thing. So they have music. I'm curious. Do they do music when they're drummers or just drums? 
Uh, normally, it's just the drums and the cadence, and each drum sounds a little different. So mm -hmm. they might hit the, the raw part of the top of the drum. There might be a moment when they when they hit the side of the drum, so it's more of a hollow sound. Mm -hmm. It's all practiced wow. and chore choreographed and coordinated. I'm going to go so, find those videos. It's long, huge overhead strokes. I mean, full arm strokes to hit these drums. <laughs> uh, so the whole body is, uh, you know, you're barefoot with a, a kimono on and, and, you know, doing foot movements. Uh, attacking your drum, hitting it hard. It's its amazing. Uh, as soon as we get off the show today, I'll post up some of um, Ben's videos. They're, they're so amazing to watch. <laughs> We're out of time. Thank you so much, Carolyn. God bless you. Wish you an awesome day, my friend. I'll be looking for those videos. My friends, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back in a week. You uh, have, I hope you have an awesome day, each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.